All right, we've already talked about some basics of the unit circle, and we've also talked about our quadrant angles and their sine or cosine. Now what we're going to do is get into a little bit more of our nice little uh, unit circle. So what we're going to do is, you know, we're actually going to try to create it. So here we go. Uh, what we should know is that in the middle of each of your quadrants, these lines right here, each quadrant is 90 degrees, so the middle of each quadrant will represent basically 45 degrees of that 90. So kind of keep that in mind. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, if we rotate that 45 degrees, okay, well, 45 degree angle is obviously 45 degrees. Excellent. Now, our reference angle in the first quadrant, if your angle is 40. Sorry, I don't know if you caught that, but I just sneezed. I tried to pause it before I sneezed, but I don't know if it worked. But anyway, uh, our 45 degree reference angle, uh, it'll be 45 in the first quadrant because our actual angle is 45 degrees. So what we can do is we can draw a triangle. Excellent. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to find the sine and cosine for this triangle. So it's a 45, 45, 90. You better know the sides of a 45, 45, 90 are 1, 1, square root of 2 where square root of 2 is the longest, so it's opposite the right angle. And from here, we can find our sine and cosine. This is the opposite side, this is the adjacent, this is our hypotenuse. So to find our cosine, we'll say the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which will be 1 over the square root of 2. When you rationalize, it will be the square root of 2 over 2. Uh, for our sine, we'll do the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which will be the square root of 2 over 2 also. Now, the only other thing we need to know, of course, is the radian equivalent for 45 degrees. So what we can do is we can actually figure that out. So 45 degrees, 180 degrees, pi. I'll go into it once, four times. So 45 degrees, pi, fours. So basically what information we have just learned is that any angle, okay, that is coterminal to 45 degrees, uh, has the cosine value of the square root of 2 over 2, the sine value of the square root of 2 over 2. To find tangent, you can do one of two things. You can look at the triangle that we've created and say opposite over adjacent to give us a value of 1, or you can use the quotient identity that says sine over cosine, which will also give you 1. Now what you also need to figure out about this is because we're in quadrant 1, okay, all these values are going to be positive. Now, the one thing that will not change in your unit circle is your hypotenuse. Your hypotenuse is always going to be positive, no matter which quadrant you're going to be located in. Keep that in mind, because the legs will change signs based on which quadrant you're in, but the hypotenuse will always stay positive. Now, one of the nice things about the unit circle is there are a bunch of patterns. And the one thing that makes the patterns kind of appear is the fact that if you have the same reference angle, then uh, the patterns will be very similar. So what we'll do is we'll rotate and say, well, what happens if we have a 45 degree reference angle in the second quadrant? Well, in the second quadrant, if your reference angle is 45 degrees, the actual angle from here to here is going to be 135 degrees. All right, not too bad. And what we're going to do now is we're going to label our triangle. Well, the sides are still the same, 1, 1, square root of 2. And the reason we know that is because anytime you have a 45 degree angle, 45, 45, 90 triangle, those are the sides. Now the one thing that is different in this one, uh, like I said, the hypotenuse will always be positive. But because we're in the second quadrant, okay, the x value is actually negative. So what that's going to do for our ordered pair is now you should know that the cosine will have a negative value where the sine will remain positive. And the only thing that we're missing, of course, is our radian measure for our angle. Well, this is one-fourth, 45 degrees, two-fourths. We're basically one-fourth short of being uh, half a circle. So this is going to be three pi fourths. All right, excellent. Moving right along. What we can do is we can do the exact same uh, stuff and basically figure out what it's going to be in the third quadrant. So in the third quadrant, if we have a 45 degree reference angle, 
then uh, what you should know is our actual angle is going to be basically 180 plus 45 which will give us 225 degrees. Uh, how that affects your ordered pairs is because we're in the third quadrant both of these are going to be negative. So negative square root of 2 over 2 and negative square root of 2 over 2. So if you notice from one quadrant to the next if you have a 45 degree reference angle the actual values of the sine and cosine don't change only the signs of those change. And the only thing that we're missing is our radian measure for 225 degrees. So if this is one whole pi, then if you add pi force to it, you'll be at 5 pi force. Excellent. If you want to draw the sides, uh, this would again be 1, 1, square root of 2. The hypotenuse is always positive. Now both of those sides are going to be negative since we're in the third quadrant. Okay, moving right along. Uh, we're going to find, figure out what we are going to get if we have a 45 degree reference angle in the fourth quadrant. So basically we're 45 degrees short of being a full circle. So that means that we are going to be at 315 degrees. Okay, now we're going to find our sine and cosine value. Well, the good news is they don't change in terms of the actual value itself. Only the signs have the potential of changing. And what you should know in the fourth quadrant, the x value is positive and the y value is negative. So it's going to be the square root of 2 over 2, comma, negative square root of 2 over 2. And then, of course, we need to figure out our reference angle. Uh, you could either say this is 5 fourths, 6 fourths, 7 fourths, or you are 1 fourth short of being two holes, which is 8 fourths. Either way, you'll get 7 pi fourths. So, that basically is how we calculate uh, if you have a 45 degree reference angle, um, how to figure out whatever the sine and cosine values are. If you know sine and cosine, you should know secant and cosecant. If you know sine and cosine, you also should be able to figure out your tangent by either creating your triangle or by using the quotient identity. Now, not only have we figured out these four, but again, anything coterminal with one of these angles will have the same sine, cosine, secant, cosecant, tangent, cotangent values. So there's a lot of patterns in the unit circle. When we bring it all together, we'll talk about how they, uh, what the patterns are and how we can calculate them. All right.